Hey everybody, it's Emily. Welcome to another Grass River Micro Class. Today I want to talk about marcescent trees. And marcescent might be a new word for many of you, but all it is is the um, characteristic of some plants to hold on to plant material after that material has already died. So today we're going to be talking about how some trees, um, most notably in our region, beeches and oaks, hold on to their leaves throughout the winter after the leaves have already died in the last fall. And this is most common with um, young trees or on the bottom branches of larger trees. And we'll talk about why that is and why marcescence happens to begin with. So marcescence sort of seems to be um, an in-between strategy between being deciduous or losing your leaves and growing them new every year and being evergreen or keeping your leaves year-round. Um, and so before we talk about marcescence and why that may be advantageous for some trees in our forests, let's first review the competitive advantages of being deciduous or evergreen. So deciduous trees often exist in highly seasonal um, climates. So places where um, high levels of sunlight and water is not available year-round, places like northern Michigan. Um, so deciduous trees, it's actually more advantageous from an energetics perspective for them to grow their leaves new every year than it is to maintain them through the winter when they're not gaining a lot of energy through photosynthesis. Um, but obviously there are evergreen trees up here too, but if you'll notice all of the evergreen trees are pretty much all of them are conifers. Um, so those leaves are actually needles and needles tend to have a waxy coating and they're sort of in a very rolled up elongated shape. And those, both of those things um, serve to minimize water loss. So that sort, conifers are sort of, are sort of like a, representing an alternative strategy to these, pro these problems of low levels of light and water in the winter. So marcescence, what is the point of that? So scientists don't really know why marcescence occurs, but there are some theories. So we'll talk about four main ones. First one is that the leaves might stay on the tree until right before the tree starts to grow in the early spring, um, so that when the leaves fall, they immediately start acting like a compost. Um, and so nutrients are new nutrients are leaching into the soil from the leaves um, at the very time when the tree needs them most or they could be acting like a mulch um, to retain water, again, um, when the tree needs water in the soil the very most. Um, second theory is that the leaves might stay on the tree um, throughout the winter to sort of act like a fence and trap snow um, at the base of the tree so that when the snow melts in the spring, again, there's this influx of water for the tree right when it starts to grow for that season. Third reason um, is that the leaves might actually protect um, the new buds from frost, um, sort of as like a little shield or cover throughout the winter, because I think we've talked about this in one of our micro classes before, um, but remember that buds actually form in the late summer or fall and are on the tree year round, and so they're ready to burst right when the weather turns um, for the better in the spring. The last major theory um, has to do with browsers. So um, animals like deer um, or in other parts of the country, elk or moose um, that like to go after those succulent buds um, or new twigs in the winter when there isn't a lot of other green stuff to eat. Um, the leaves might sort of deter those browsers from going after the delicate parts of the plant because the leaves don't have really any good nutrition in them. Um, However, I should note that it's not like it's one of these theories versus the other ones. It could be a combination of these um, selective pressures that are creating, um, selecting for this marcescence characteristic. But there's another explanation still. The other possibility is that there isn't a competitive advantage to being marcescent, but perhaps that um, marcescent trees like beeches and oaks actually just represents a sort of transition um, stage between being evergreen and being deciduous. So to understand this, um, it's important to note that um, it's not, so, so all plants, all trees, all plants were evergreen um, way a long, long time ago. And then actually as many as 130 independent times, 
being deciduous evolved in different lineages of plants. So it could be that beeches and oaks are just kind of lagging behind everybody else that's already deciduous um, and they're sort of still in that transition period. To support this, beeches and oaks actually are in the same family. They're super closely related. And that family does include several evergreen species, not up here, but further south, things like live oaks and tan oaks. That wouldn't really explain why only the small trees or um, the lower branches of larger trees exhibit this um, pattern, but basically it could be a coincidence. The fact that the lower trees do exhibit marcescence, um, the younger trees, does seem to support the idea that it's to deter browsers um, because browsers can actually reach these young trees or lower branches or that um, it's allowing these trees to get a leg up on um, older trees that are already more well established. Basically the thinking goes that the younger trees are the ones that really need this competitive advantage um, to get above the trees that are shading them out in the canopy above. Another um, line of evidence that supports the fact that marcescence does confer a selective advantage um, is the fact that beeches and oaks, especially oaks up here, tend to grow on those drier, more nutrient poor sites. So maybe they do need the leaves as a compost or to retain water. Um, so it's unknown, but it's cool to know um, that there's this scientific debate going on. Um, and also, you know, they just provide a sort of different texture and a pop of color, if you can call it that, um, to the winter woods and protection for things like birds and other small animals from the elements. So it's a neat um, part of the forest this time of year. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll be back next week. Bye.